Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Lion of Judah. You are now with the host, Dr. Ina McBride Silva. And today we're going to be talking about the man of soul wisdom. Yah, hey, ra, hey, Yahuwah, hello, he, Yahuwah, say the oath. We're going to be discussing the beauty of his plan in the earth. We're going to be discussing how he is wonderful and no one is better. All right, let's get into this today. I'm going to open up with a brief halal, and we're going to begin. Most High, we thank you. We give your name the glory and the honor. I know the word glory is probably not the best one, but for some of the people who are not as astute in their etymology, I'm going to use that one today. But we give your name all the esteem, Father. For you're worthy. He alone is worthy. And we just praise you for breathing through your Ruach on this teaching that everyone who comes on and who takes a listen will be Baruch. Amen. We're going to talk about the fact that the Most High won't put all his eggs in one basket. I'm I'm appealing to all of the truth seekers all over the land. Some of you may not know who you are yet. And so I am under order to release this teaching and to encourage those that are sincere truth seekers who you are so that you can come out and now I really don't like the use of the eggs because the symbolism is often used for occulted practices but please just bear with me as I'm going through this age-old saying that you don't put all your eggs in one basket and what that really means is that you need to diversify you need to have strategy you need to plan ahead so that You're not kind of left out when obstacles or trials come. So let's talk about Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 through 10, really the entire chapter. How the manifold wisdom of the Father is beheld in the earth realm. If you think that everything is about quote unquote church going, And that that's all there is to the walk with Messiah, you're lost. And I'm going to try to get you, I'm going to try to get you back in, in line and get you in the full understanding of what this about, what this is about, and to give some understanding and clarity to the full plan of the Father, okay? We know that the mystery of the Messiah was first revealed to the chosen people, to Yah Israel. But in Ephesians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul was talking about in verse 4, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of the Messiah, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. Okay. There was great revelation that was given to the apostles and to the early believers. <clears throat> As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Ruach. That word is set apart rather than holy. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Messiah by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the esteem of Yahuwah given unto me by the effectual working of his power and i know to many of you it's like what is that what is that what is that what is she talking about okay let's look at the paleo graphic and 
intensification of the father's name. Okay. Behold the nail, behold the hand. The, what we're experiencing is, is, is experiencing is an age-old plan of the father to redeem us, his people, and to get his people out. So please don't think that the only people that seek truth are the people that go to churches. In, in all actuality, it is the exact opposite. Now, there are some people who do sincerely seek truth. And yes, I said that. In all actuality, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> you have a lot of closed-minded, narrow-minded, um, hard-hearted, stiff-naked, stubborn people who attend modern-day churches. Okay? And that is what that is. And I'm not... I'm not throwing any stones here. I'm just, I'm being very factual. I'm trying to be very relevant and I'm trying to be very informing. Okay. Because Yahuwah didn't put all his eggs in one basket. And so if you are a believer, you need to broaden your horizons a little bit. You need to go beyond the, uh, the circ doors. And I'll get into what, what this is all about. Why I'm saying circ instead of church. And you need to get out there. You need a fellowship. You need a fellowship with other people. You need to stop just fellowshipping with people that go to your local quote unquote church. You need to stop because you're stagnating your growth that way. This this is bigger than that. This is a body. Ugh. This is a body. It is a worldwide body. And, and while we are set apart, we are all in this world. And it is possible for Father, through Messiah, through his Ruach, to connect you with other truth seekers. Okay? And then those truth seekers today, I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you to become believers. I, I want to I wanna shed some light on why we have some people out there, not necessarily even believers, but they, they're seeking truth. They're, they're seeking truth in uncovering truth conspiracies they're seeking truth in uncovering lies in different areas of the world system because these these were seers people who really pay attention and they were put out there in their gift by father to expose things to everyone i've, I've seen people who unfortunately didn't understand who they were have very powerful giftings operating in them, but yet they were not fully converted to Father yet. And so this is an urgency to those that I'm calling in by the Ruach, it's time to come home. It's time to come home. And many of them saw the gangster mentality. Yep, I'm gonna call it what it is. The gangster mentality of the churches. Pimping folks, taking their money, not telling them the truth. <laughs> Many of these people, when we are real honest with ourselves, if you're still a church goer in the in the modern sense and you're not hearing me because you think I'm being overly critical, if you sit down and really be honest with yourself, you understand why the people in the world don't believe the message. Because they're, they're hearing one thing, you know, they hear, they hear what people say, and then they watch what people do okay and then they're looking at how could there be this if i see people doing that and i used to be one of those people okay and i guess that's why yah has built me up to be a strong prophetic voice a strong and when i say prophetic voice because some people they're so ignorant like they don't understand anything about scripture and i'm gonna need them to go sit down because there are people who are like you know prophets don't exist anymore yeah no sh hush your mouth and go sit down because that is so uh, apostate and heretical it's not scriptural it's not scripturally founded it's just because you see a lot of people running around saying they're prophets and they're liars but that doesn't negate what father put in his word okay Father said he was going to leave gifts, mm, come on, in the body to perfect the body. Now, somebody lying, either he lied or I'm lying if I'm saying that these gifts do not continue. 
And that's it. Because I had the awful pleasure of fellowshipping with people who don't believe the whole truth, but yet they want to tell everybody else something. They need to go sit down until they fully get an understanding of scripture. And I'm going to say that and leave it alone because I know some of you are hearing my voice like change because it, it angers me. I have the fullness of the Ruach working in me and it angers me when I encounter people who, you know, are deceptive and they may not understand things and they push off their misunderstandings on other people. And this mostly happens in churches. <laughs> Why? 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 Because the Satan infiltrated Cirques a long time ago. He was actually the one who set all that nonsense up. Oh, yes. Because the word church really is not the word that you would use for the body of Messiah. And we're going to get into that. Just keep remembering Ephesians 3 and 9 and, and keep remembering, behold the nail, behold the hand. Mm -hmm. The revelation of who the Messiah is and what he came to do. And this kind of ties in with Galatians 5 and with Romans where it talks about we now come to be full pledge believers understanding that we have to crucify the works of the flesh. And, and if you are a true pastor, okay, really working hard to truly rear up and, and, and help the sheep. This message is not against you, okay? I am not, I just said it earlier, I'm not against the gifts in operation in the truth. I am against the gifts in operation in a lie. I'm against that. I can't be for it and against it at the same time. I'm against it. And I won't take that back. And I don't want to uh, present myself as a know-it-all. I am just a, a beginner, a novice. In, in, in researching, but I would encourage others who are trying to lead in truth, you're going to have to become a researcher, okay? And you're going to have to start researching things beyond scripture. Oh my goodness, did she say that? Did she say that? That sounds heretical. It's not heretical, okay? It's not heretical at all. You're going to have to get beyond the walls. Ah! Come on. You're going to have to because you're leading people in a very destructive world system. And so you're going to have to be a researcher and be an informed person to help the people that you may be covering grow. Because there are things that Messiah is asking all of us to do that we may struggle with getting done. Because we don't have the full understanding. And so that's where becoming a researcher of what's going on around you sheds light on why father said what he said. Mm. Okay. I'm going to move forward. Remember, this was a plan. Behold the nail. Behold the hand. He came he sent his son and came so he could show us how to suffer in the world system. If you want your salvation to be true, then you have to know how to suffer in the world system. It's time out for people trying to run into these congregations and hide from what is going on around you. We're supposed to be apostolic and prophetic voices in the earth crying out against what is going on around us, crying out against what is going on in pharmacia, crying out against what is going on in politics, crying out against what is going on in the evil food industry, crying out against what is going on in the educational system, crying out against it and crying out the answer. And no, you can't do all that from a building pew seat. I'll say that again. You can't do all that from a building pew seat. If you are with me and you've been following me, then you can see how the Satan has sidetracked so many and pulled them into a state of Laodicean worship where they think that all they have to do is get together, sing a couple songs, sing Kumbaya, and then I did y'all a favor. Because I showed up. No, baby, you didn't show up yet. You didn't show up for service yet. Mm. Stay with me. 
I know some of the words I'm saying, they're hard to hear. It sounds like I'm criticizing you. Listen, I like to preach this way because I'm talking to myself. We have something to do. And you can't get it done if you're in a Laodicean uh, ministry. Because I don't like to use the word church. I like to use the word kahal. Because that is the scriptural term for the scriptural body. So we have Hebrews 3 and 12 that talks about, see to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living. They have the word God. I like to say most high Elohim. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbe unbelief in departing. Depart. Depart means you have to leave something. Departing from the living Most High Elohim. Let's talk about the seeds for a minute, okay? It's going to sound like I'm rambling, but I really have. I, there's a method to what sounds like madness, but, the, but this is the truth. Deuteronomy 22, 9 through 11. And Deuteronomy 22, 9 through 23. Oh, sorry. Deuteronomy 22 and 9 through chapter 23 and 18. These are some specific commandments that were given about mixing the seeds. Okay. And, I, and I'm pointing to this because there has been a departing from scripture. There has been a departing from studying the fullness of scripture. Okay. People are preaching in apostate, impotent, powerless gospel oh we only live by grace okay and i told you i didn't like that word grace look it up look it up and and and, and really study through that because we live by the esteem of yah hey his esteem you're looking to get his approval on your life you looking to get that and while that is not something that you can gain in your own self-righteousness, you can gain it when you fully accept Messiah. And the heart that was in Messiah was a believing heart. He believed that everything that his father said was right. There was nothing in Messiah that doubted the word because he was the word. And so I'm pointing to Deuteronomy 22, verses 9 through 11, and then Deuteronomy 22, 9, all the way through Deuteronomy 23, verse 18. We're talking about some words of our father here. Stay with me. His words should matter to you if you love him. There should be nothing about his word that is irrelevant to you. That is, oh, that was Old Testament. No, there's nothing old eh, 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 about our father. Everything is good and very good about him. All of it. And if you are one of the truth seekers, stay with me because I'm still talking to you. And I know this may be hard, but I'm digging through two piles at the same time. Those who say they love him and those who have stayed away from him because they saw all the apostasy and they didn't want none. And I don't blame them because I don't want it either. But I am cheerfully beckoning those who are just truth seekers because a lot of them call themselves just truth seekers. Time to come home. Deuteronomy 22 and and. 9 verses all the way through 23 and 18 talks about don't mix seeds, okay? Talks about don't mix seeds. Let's talk about why. Let's talk about why. The U.S. has led developments in seed improvements such as hybridization, okay? What is hybridization? Hybridization is mixing seeds, exactly what Father said not to do. It has a lot to do with GMO. It has a lot to do with um, genetic modification of animals, okay? Now we now now we can see the relevance of why understanding Deuteronomy 22 and 23 is important because this sheds light on why it's wrong. If you're a truth seeker, stay with me. Cuz a lot of truth seekers are the people they're not even necessarily as spiritually grounded, but they started researching what's going on with the food industries, what's going on with the government industries, you know, whistleblowers. There was a desire in them for truth. 
and father began to fuel it by showing them the corruption of the world system but first we got to know why that system is so corrupt it's because it's against yah and it's because it was gen it was engineered by the satan to be against yah if you don't understand why mixing seeds is wrong look up a whole lot of information on gmo foods and why it's dangerous for the body hybridization seeds are also dangerous for the body look it up i'll have some links in the box that talks about how you can find something called heirloom seeds if you're interested in growing your own food okay this was just a little blurb from one of the links that i have posted that you can go to and that you can read up on this and i hope now you see why all of this is relevant because there are people who have turned people away with an unbelieving heart saying oh no we don't have to follow no food laws you can just eat whatever you want to eat you can just do whatever you want to do yeah no and it's sad that it's people that's on the outside of what some people call the cert who see this better than they do they're they're under the false impression that i could just bless everything and i could put anything in my mouth it doesn't matter i could put anything in my mouth <laughs> yeah no if you believe those scriptures about not defiling your temple because not defiling your temple has a lot more to do than what you than what you put in your mouth than what you think let's talk about the original sin with adam and eve what did they do they ate Ugh. Mm, mm, mm. Stay with me. They ate. They partook of something that Father said don't partake of. They ate. And some people may want to make that so symbolic, but <laughs> eating is a, is, 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 is a real spiritual action. And, and it manifests even in the natural. So if you're walking around eating a whole lot of nasty, unclean stuff, there's a reason for it. Hmm. And that's all I'm going to say. Time to seek father about our diet. Time to stop running from that discipline. Time to get the apostasy out of our heart. Time to stop running from him and saying, I can do it my way. Because a lot of people are unhealthy even. They're not even walking in the full benefit. Me, myself, I've gone through it. But that's what caused me to turn because all the other areas I'm looking at in my life is clean. I'm like, Father, I'm doing as much as I can do for you. Why am I falling ill? And he began to show me. It's your food intake. Look at what you're putting in your mouth, daughter. Don't believe the lies that you under grace. And that you can just eat whatever you want. Even when you go to the doctor, they tell you. A natural man, a doctor, will tell you certain foods are not good for you. But nowadays, people don't want to believe nobody. They don't want to believe the doctor. They don't want to believe y'all. They just want to do whatever they want to do. And yet, no. This, this is having an unbelieving heart. Because our Messiah was a man of discipline. He was a man of the anointing. He followed the commands of the father. What does this got to do with eggs in a basket? Okay. We need to keep on the apostasy because it's about more than eating. It's about a whole lifestyle. But he who lives for pleasure is dead even while he is still alive. Okay. Okay. Add to that Titus because that was 1 Timothy 5 and 6. Add to that Titus 1 and 11, who must be silenced for the sake of dishonorable gain. They undermine entire households and teach things they should not. Hmm. 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 Sound like a lot of these modern day teachers to me. Let's add to that Titus chapter 3 and 3. For at one time we too were foolish, disobedient, misled. Misled. If you're being misled, if you're a truth seeker and you've been misled to believe that this is only about a building, I'm opening your eyes today. Come on into Father because it's bigger than a building and you do not have to join a modern day shirk to be a follower of Messiah. What you need to do is find a kahal. You need to find a body of believers. They may meet in a house. They may meet in a shack. They may meet online. But you need to yoke yourself with other truth seekers that follow Messiah who will help you. 
You don't have to go to a pimp pastor. But you do need to get your belief right. And you do need to understand that the father placed you and positioned you in a special spot. So that you could find your way home. I'll read this again. Titus 3 and 3. For at one time we were, we too were foolish, disobedient, misled, enslaved. Mm. Enslaved to all sorts of desires and pleasures. A lot of people are enslaved to the desires of this fleshful temple. It's a problem. They say they have Messiah, but yet they're still a slave to their temple. Mm -mm. He called us to be masters of our temples, for us to control our temples, for us to bring all those earthly desires subject. It goes on to say, living in malice, envy, hateful, and hating one another. Not to mention Galatians 5 that tells you the fruit of the Ruach. This is what people are seeing, and I'm telling you why. It's because the apostate church that is in full effect is not the body of Messiah. There is a dividing line. Now, are they true? Are there true believers who are caught up in those apostate places? Yes. And so this is a call to them. Get out of there. Get out of there. That's not it. And it doesn't mean that you're not a follower of Messiah because you disconnect yourself with apostate places. If your house of worship is not a true house of worship, and I'm going to define what a true house of worship looks like, then you need to run like Joseph ran from that Jezebeling woman in Egypt. You need to run. Because that, that sensual Fill yourself with your own desires. Yah is going to give you everything you need. He's going to make you a millionaire. All that crazy stuff. Yeah, no. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that it's wrong to have things. It means that it's wrong to want things more than you want father. And it's hard to want father when everything around you, your all your senses are being bombarded with do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Do what thou will. You see it on the TV. You see it on the phone. You see it in the books. You see. And then your pastor's telling you that. <laughs> it makes it a little hard for you to fight. <laughs> it makes it. It makes it downright impossible. So you don't want to be in a place where they're preaching an apostate message. A message without the power that delivers you from being enslaved to all sorts of desires and pleasures. See, the problem is people don't understand the history of the movement of the Messiah. And so they are not watching how apostate everything has become. And how self-seeking the people who say they love Messiah have been led to become. I'll tell you something for a good example. Look at your prayer life. What are you praying about? If you even pray. Are you praying only for what you want? <laughs> are you praying only because you want a new house? You want a new car? You want to... If you if you're praying for that a lot, then yeah, the apostate, the apostate message is really gripping on your heart. Our prayer life is, is dedicated for us. Look at the look at the message that Messiah prayed. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, first of all, I'm starting out. I'm giving him all the glory. I am nowhere in the picture. <laughs> I ain't asking him for a thing. All right? I'm just like, whoo, you so good. Okay, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Okay, now I'm talking about let your will be done. Let your will be done. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Are you following through that prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. Mm. Don't sound like I asked to be a millionaire anywhere in there to me. <laughs> I don't know about to you. And I know Messiah could have really, really asked and gotten 
a lot of things. But he was concerned about us having our daily bread. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having things because I don't want people to take this to the left and be like, oh, she said, I'm saying there's something wrong when the evil desires and pleasures of this life are all you care about. And that is a conversation you need to have with father because the scripture in Jeremiah says the heart is deceitful above all things and who can know it besides father yeah you might say in your heart well i want these things so i can do good things for people but you need to put that on the altar if you are full of the ruach hakodesh which some people call the holy spirit you need to take everything before father and you really need to let him investigate it not just say oh this is what i really feel like i i want to do because he knows the hidden desires and motives that we have sometimes. And I tell you, it's ugly. Trust me, I know. <laughs> let's, let's talk about Ephesians 3. This is a screenshot. I would encourage you to get to a good concordance, good lexicon, really get to study and look through words, studylight.org, eSword. These are all good tools. Ephesians 3 and 10, it gives you all the different versions as well. And to illuminate for everyone the stewardship of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in Yah, who created all things. Okay, so he hid this mystery. His purpose was that now through this kahal, we'll talk about that word, the manifold wisdom of Yah should be made known to the rulers and authorities, ooh, to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realm. You want to talk about spiritual warfare? Let me tell you, we got some awesome brothers and sisters out there who are not even connected to Father fully yet, and they have been doing warfare because the gift is given without repentance and they have been working in their gift to expose lies and this teaching is to encourage them now to make sure they reconnect with father because they saw the apostasy and so they wouldn't join the church and they wouldn't su submit their hearts to the apostasy but something in them was like keep seeking truth keep seeking truth keep seeking to know truth and many of them begin to war i know some of you are like that can't be true it's very true because there were prayer warriors huh? see some of us pray and we don't pray about what we want there were prayer warriors covering them while they were out there seeking truth and they were looking for things yeah some of you know what i'm talking about now it's time for us to get busy and start calling in our family because we're close to the end and we have those out there that need us that need the real kahal that need to connect with us that will really circumvent their heart to father because that's all they've been waiting on was for a real son of elohim huh, to meet them and to deliver them into the truth yeah, this was the manifold wisdom of Yah that he scattered his children all over, not just in quote unquote cirques. They're all over and they're 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 absolutely exposing the lies. That's how some of us who were blinded by religion, that's how some of us who were blinded by, by religion got set free. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I know what has happened to me. I've met apostles out there. They were totally disconnected from Father, but they had an apostolic gift. And let me tell you, they led me into some real truth. And I was able to join hands and pray with them and help them connect back home. But first, I had to be humble enough to listen to their message to me. So if you're thinking that I'm a kind of person, I think I know everything, it's actually the opposite. I've gained a lot of knowledge and understanding since I broke away from being religious and just hanging around with other religious people and started being out there in the real kahal that is beyond the walls. 
and fellowshipping with people who you may, mm, they don't look like they're really a Christian. Yeah, no, they're not. Yeah, no. Because modern day Christianity is from Mystery Babylon. And I said that and I won't take it back. It is what it is. And I know some people are going to be offended that I said that. But that's between you and the Father. Because I'm telling you, the apostate gospel that was preached subverted the hearts and minds of many till you don't even have that many true shepherds anymore. The true shepherds are very few. And I'm thankful to know a few. I'm very thankful to know a few true shepherds. But there are not that many. Because most of these that are out here are heralings. And let me tell you, those brothers and sisters that we have that were out there using their gifts to uncover truth, they helped cover us back. Because they wasn't coming in to follow behind no lies. Hey, <laughs> they, they wasn't going to do it. And I don't blame them because I now am walking in freedom with them. You can't follow behind lies and follow behind Yah. And if you're in a house where your shepherd is not open to information, that right there should show you something is wrong. That right there should show you something is wrong. If people are closed-minded and they can't hear anything, mm -mm, that because we Messiah doesn't make us closed-minded. He makes us thinkers. And so therefore, we like to get information because we like to think. We like to discern. Why do you think the gift of discernment is in the body? You can't discern a situation if you don't get the information. Mm. I know this is deep, and to some people, it was deeply offensive. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for you that the Most High will deliver you out of the hands of the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realm because they thought they had this. They had already locked down the religious leaders of the Kahal in the. Israeli nation in the Hebrew nation, we know that the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, became apostate. They fell away from Father Yah. They had already locked that down. And so they were like, Yeah, we got it. Nobody's going to break free. Nobody's going to really see what's going on. Nobody's going to really do what the Father said do. <laughs> But he had reserved one huh, that was going to come and that was going to preach, I shall suffer for my father. And his life sparked a revolution in many to seek after truth. And to illuminate for everyone the stewardship of this mystery. There is a service that has to be done. I am thanking every truth seeker out there who made YouTube videos, who went around passing out the flyers, who did talking about conspiracy theory when everybody else said they were crazy, who had doors slammed in their face by others who said, just stay away from me with that crazy information. These were brothers and sisters who had to put their feet to the floor. And they began to try to get information to the rest of us. I know, but some of you, it seems like I'm way out there. And what I'm talking about is not truth. But if you follow with me, then you know that's all in the manifold wisdom of Yah. And he was making it known to those authorities and rulers in the heavenly realms. Yeah, no. I don't put all my eggs in one basket. I got a manifold wisdom that I'm working through. Kahal. I've been saying that word and it took me a long time to get to this. Kahal is the original word in Hebrew scripture for the assembly. It is Strong's H6950. It means congregation. Trying to wait for this to move out of the way. Assembly, company, and multitude. Kahal from H695. Usually, concretely means assembly, company, congregation, multitude. It was in Genesis 35 and 11, Genesis 28 and 3, Genesis 48 and 4, an assembly, a crowd of nations. Let's look at some of these scriptures. Mm, it's very funny that it goes back to Abram. <laughs> and Yah Almighty, bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a kahal of people. 
Genesis 35, 11. And Yah said unto him, I am Yah Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply a nation and a kahal of nations. See, anybody that knows revelationally through the revelation of Messiah that we are in that period of the kahal. This isn't the church age. <laughs> this isn't the age of the Satan. Because when I show you what cert means, you're going to fall out your chair. You're going to fall out your chair. Because it's real wicked. The devil is not, it's not fighting fair. Let me tell you, <laughs> he's fighting dirty and he's trying to subvert people's hearts into a false movement. Okay. And like I said, if you are a true shepherd, then you're going to receive this information and you're going to utilize it wisely. And you're going to develop your assembly differently than the modern day ecclesia or church is doing. You're going to be a lot different. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb. Because Father is going to give you a, a divine impartation and take you forward in the apostolic governance of what he wanted from the start, okay? Because the whole way they do church is totally wrong. Like one person standing in front of thousands, yeah, no. No. That lecture method, no. I'm only doing it like this because I'm sharing out a teaching. But that lecture method, is no. It's a control tactic. It's really, it's, it's not okay. It's not okay. When I study with other believers, we all have something to say. We all have something to share. We do it in an orderly way, but we we pass the mic. <laughs> Come on, pass the mic. <laughs> in most ecclesias or, or, or churches, you go up there and talk about pass the mic. They'll be like, go sit down. Honey, they'll call security on you. <laughs> they will call security. <laughs> they will call security. I'm laughing because it's, it's it's really it's really hilarious. Okay, it's a, it's hilarious what the, the 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 devil the Satan has done, and it's time to expose it and talk about it. Like I said, people gonna get mad, but it's it's, it's because they don't have understanding and their minds have been bewitched, and they think that the current system that's set up is the way it's supposed to be. No, we're gonna we're gonna go back to the call. a nation and a company of nations. All right. Let's keep going. Let's let's talk about the cirque. Problems with the word church. Because I know some people are like, why is she always talking about words? Why she don't really like to use Jesus anymore? I mean, I thought that was his name. You know, it's not his name. It's a name that the Babylonian title that they gave to him that was such a poor translation. It makes my stomach sick. But I know some people are still utilizing it because that's what they choose to utilize. I'm just telling you, I don't utilize it anymore because I understand what it means and where it came from. And it just isn't a good thing. I, I, I would like to use his name that he was given since people have gone through all the trouble. Other, what, brethren? Of really going through that Hebrew, searching out the scriptures and 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 translating his name properly, which what should which is what should have been done to start with. But because Yahushua was a freak, mm, and then and, and when I say was a freak, not to me, but he was a freak to the Romans. They murdered all of the apostles. Do you really think that these same people were gonna release the correct information? Come on. I'm sorry. I grew up a little edgy. And so I'm just like, listen, <laughs> you, there's no need for you to think that your 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 primal enemy is all of a sudden going to be your friend. That should make you close one eye, open one eye and say, hmm, I better watch that. Let's not forget that it was wrong that crucified Messiah. Church, old English, Cerise. Cirque, place of assembly set aside for Christian worship, the body of Christian believers, Christians collectively, e ecclesiastical authority. Okay, so far, so good. Let's go down to the next one. This is probable. See extensive note in OED, borrowed via an unrecorded Gothic word from Greek, Kyriak, Oikia, Kyriokon, Doma, the Lord's house from Kyrios. Ruler Lord from Pi, root Q to swell, swollen, hence strong, powerful. But I highlighted two words right there because 
if you're reading through this and you're, you're a language person, some of these things may have jumped out at you is a little bit disturbing, but maybe not much. Sorry, can Hmm. So the word church originated from those two words. Let's keep searching. So what I did here was show you how you can't stop on the surface when you're when you're researching something. You can't stop right there. You got to look through all the information and then look up all the other information that was in the information you found. I'll say that again. You got to look up all the information that was in the information that you found. And those two words stuck out to me. Sarik and Sarki. And so I made another slide about what that is. Because since this is the root word of where the word church comes from, those two words, those, when, as a matter of fact, if you put Sarki in the etymological lookup, it'll say church because they mean one and the same. Hmm, that should be disturbing. But let's keep going. What is Cirque? Oh, beautiful enchantress of the Isle of Aia, who transformed into swine those who drank from her cup. What? How do we get how do we get this associated with the church? That should be your question. Hmm. Some sinister things have gone on with words. Again, Jeremiah the prophet, he really explained it very well. The evil pen of the scribes. <laughs> Those who transcribe the information. Why do you think in Revelation he said that those who add to and take away were going to be cursed? Hmm? Why do you think that warning was there? And I wonder how these people did this stuff and then they wrote that down and they didn't see that. Because <laughs> I would be scared. But because they don't believe it and they think it's a joke, right? They think it's a joke. They have no problem with taking words out, putting words in, adding in things, taking out things, because it's a joke. But words carry power and words carry meaning. And so if church is associated with a Roman and Greek goddess of enchantment, yeah, that wouldn't be the word that I would want to use for an assembly of true believers in the Messiah. Let's stick with Kahal. Let's stick with the Abrahamic covenant where he promised that he was going to pull together a true assembly of those whom he esteemed to follow after truth. Because what is enchantment? Enchantment is lies. I'm going to say that and I'm going to leave it right there. Further misunderstanding with the introduction of Ecclesia. See, that's a late word that comes with the 14th century congregation, a gathering assembly, a crowd, an organized group as of a religious order or body of scholars or body of scholars or body of scholars act of congregating this was more of a latin root word that denoted a governmental order okay but you have to understand that this was a governmental order that was set up by the world you had a total disconnect between the messianic order in the in, in the, the new gentiles who came in under messiah and unfortunately all of the true people that could teach them were systemically murdered. So you had a lot of people come together to formulate this new congregation, Ecclesia, that didn't really understand the commands of the Father. Hence, all the confusion. Okay? You have to follow the history and you have to really understand some of the things that went on. Ecclesia is a better choice than church, though. I would definitely say that. And it has more of a Latin root, but it also ties in with congregation. But not the kahal. Still, still missing the fruit of kahal. 
Torah seekers call, truth seekers call. Understand who you are. This is not a religious organization. The body of Yah is not a religious organization. This is the body of Messiah, and he is bigger than the devil's plan for you. And the devil meaning the Satan, the adversary. He is ruling this current world system. So if you're one of those truth seekers who is uncovering like the information about 5G, I have a wonderful uh, fellow Berean there, and she really does a lot with um, 5G. If you if you're wondering why so many people are opposing you, it's because they're under the dark sorcery magic of the Babylonian kingdom, and they can't believe the truth because their minds are darkened to truth. It's only because of Father that you understand what you understand. But it's time to come all the way in and submit yourself to Father and understand He's bigger than a church organization. Look here. Look at all these occulted sig- symbols that are associated with current day symbols you move the horn here i think this is from a roman kirk a roman um church circ they might be using this as a mary this is all recycled <laughs> there's nothing new under the sun scripture is real let's look here look at how the hats are similar remember i'm telling you the satan is ruling with sorcery dark babylonian magic witchcraft and mystery orders these mystery orders are real understand that the world problems have a sinister root deceive people being misled by some powerful occult practices that date back to the beginning most world leaders are part of some occult mystery order and sect and i just put this one in here to get you started but this is a list of skull and bones members if the name itself should attack you and make you say wait a minute why are people a part of an organization called skull and bones what is that and world leaders at that because a lot of our presidents were skull and bone members what again this is a plea to you to do your own research do your own research don't just take my word for it do your own research there is a connectivity with the religious hat here, the mitre, and the hat that the priests of the ancient Dagon fish worship wore. And this is old, y'all. This is an ancient mystery religion that seems to be reborn, was reborn, here. But it will come to an end. Defeat of Mystery Babylon. This is where it started in Genesis chapter 10 through 12. If you don't know anything about those chapters, read those chapters. After the flood. Yah flooded the earth for a reason. There was a lot of genetic contamination. There was a lot of mixing seeds. There was actually giants that were born during that time. And if you don't believe giants, then do the research. Because there is lots of research out there where researchers... Some of them totally disconnected from the Kahal for right now. Found, searched out truth and found out that the giant bones are really real and that giants really existed. And it is a genetic mutation, but how? 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 Genesis chapter 6 tells you how. And I won't go into all of that. But Genesis chapter 6 comes before Genesis chapter 10 and 12. Because after the flood, this problem with genetic mutation continued. Which is why I put the information in the earlier side about mixing seeds. Messiah himself pointed to that as in the days of Noah, so shall it be when he returns. We're back to those days, y'all. There's a lot of genetic tampering going on. It's time to repent, it's time to prepare, and it's time to connect. So if you are just a truth seeker for now, come home to Father. He's real, and he's reaching out to you. He's been helping you get this far. He will help you get the rest of the way. Most high yeah, I'm going to lift up this palau for those who are out there who are wondering. Without proper shepherding, without proper care. 
who are seeking you, who are being pushed down and pushed away, who are being told that they're wrong by circus leaders, who are being disrespected by circus leaders, who are, who are, who are not deceived by these circus leaders, but who still yet need your love. I'm praying for you to surround them with members of the Kahal. I'm praying for you to encourage their heart to let your Ruach fall fresh upon them, that they would return to you full heartedly, understanding now and knowing that the work of the Satan, the evil one, is real and that their only protection is in you, Messiah. I'm asking you to comfort their hearts and comfort their minds as they come before you and they repent. As they repent, Father, knowing and understanding that the only way is to have a humble heart before you. That we've all fallen short before your throne. That we've all done things wrong, but that some of us want to do it right. But we need your help. My prayer, Father, is that you will strengthen those with the daily bread on today, that you will manifest uh, your supernatural rhema in the midst of this message, and that you will bless your people. Bless your kahal, Father. Bless them from the four corners of the earth. Uh, let your ruach breath encourage and uplift them, strengthen them in their inner man, that you might get the glue, that you might get the esteem, and the honor. I mean, I mean, you can look up organizations online. My email's right there. Reach out if you need to. You can create your own groups and then get true biblical study materials from trusted biblical teachers. Remember, Yad Hey Vav Hey is everything. He is good and set apart, and He is perfect. I baruch you on today. Shalom.